Hello everybody, this is Nurse Tom from Hippocrates and you know I want to talk a little bit today about something I get a lot of email on and uh, that's cancer. Now you know here at the Hippocrates Health Institute we work with people in a natural way using lifestyle and dietary means to support optimal health and with that you know uh, what I do here at Hippocrates is uh, I see people that come in from all over the world and some of them will have health challenges and some don't and some come here to uh, help support themselves naturally that people that have cancer and you know we look at things like state of art biofeedback testing we look at a very advanced blood panel that we offer here at Hippocrates and we also do energy testing and from these tests, we take that and we take into account any type of health challenges. And we also look at the past medical history of that person. And from there, I make recommendations on the whole program here at Hippocrates so they can get to their health goals as quickly as possible. Now, some people will come here that may have various cancers and they want to work on the body and the healing in a natural way. And in here at Hippocrates, I mean, we don't heal people. We don't uh, cure people. People heal themselves using natural means. And with that, you know, um, when we talk about diet, you know, uh, even back when I had had cancer, uh, over 16 years ago, I had stage four cancer uh, type of lymphoma, um, fully recovered from that and using uh, natural means and uh, along with conventional means and with that you know I was always told back then you know eat whatever you want it doesn't matter and so I beg to differ as I start to uh, learn more and more through the years and see the research and science that's out there and I want to talk about some things that people can do more naturally to help support themselves and to support their health. So one of the biggies that you may hear of is uh, it doesn't matter what we eat and it doesn't matter if we eat sugar, we don't eat sugar. So here's what we have to look at, for example, when people say it's okay to eat sugar uh, when we have cancer. So how are cancers diagnosed? So they look at many factors. They'll look at sometimes blood factors, imaging studies. And one of the imaging studies, uh, and they also use biopsy, of course, to confirm. Uh, it, one of the studies that they use is a PET scan. Now, a PET scan is a radioactive glucose isotope. They're injecting sugar into the blood. Wherever cancer is, it's glowing. It's metabolism, it's feeding the cancer, okay? So when we can use foods that are low sugar or low glycemic and a low glycemic load on the body, we can support reducing the growth of that cancer or tumor. And so, you know, here at Hippocrates, we're very strict about that. We go very low glycemic, and beyond that, we don't even recommend things like fruits in the diet because with fruit, a lot of times when people start to use that or indulge with that, they start to eat more and more and it creates more and more sugars into the blood. Beyond that, certain fruits can be acidic to the body. And that kind of brings me into my next concept I want to talk about a bit beyond going low glycemic or low sugar. So when we're talking about uh, using things that are less acidic, we're going to support the body as well. So we help the body in alkalizing here at Hippocrates. So why do we do that? So when we look more specifically at something like cancer, in order for cancer to metastasize or to create blood vessels and creating metastases or uh, other tumors, it has to have a fairly acidic medium in the body. So we work on alkalizing to help to reduce that potential. How do we do that? Well, we use things that are natural. We use things like wheatgrass juice. Wheatgrass juice is a tremendous superfood, very high in chlorophyll and phytonutrients for alkalizing. 
We use vegetable juice. Now the vegetable juice here is a bit more specific. We use things like celery, cucumber, sunflower, and pea sprouts for the high nutrient content, the complete protein, and again, chlorophyll and phytonutrients. Now, beyond that, we'll use things like lemon water. Now, lemon is an acidic fruit, but once you mix it with your saliva, it becomes alkaline, working on alkalizing the body. And then we use assorted vegetables and sprouts also to support alkalizing. Now, there was even a 2009 landmark study, and this is right off of PubMed. This is where medical doctors get a lot of their research. This study showed that when they alkalize the body, it helped to stop and prevent the metastasis of breast cancer, liver cancer, and node involvement. And that was just through alkalizing. So alkalizing, very important there. Now, that perlays into the next step of nutrition, which is enzymes. Now, enzymes we find in living foods or raw foods. So when we cook a food, unfortunately, it will kill the enzymes when we heat it over 115 degrees. And this was found 15 degrees Fahrenheit. This was found from uh, the research from Dr. Edward Howe, he's an enzymologist, and he's researched that, and this is what he's found in his research. So enzymes will help with all types of processes and detoxification in the body and supporting the body function and absorption, many, many, many functions in the body. So we work on creating a high enzyme content in the body to support overall health and well-being as well. And then beyond that, we may even look at targeted supplementation of enzymes, uh, such as digestive enzymes for absorption, uh, and then proteolytic enzymes as well to support the body and in its needs. And then we look at nutrients, those things like vitamins and minerals. Now, vitamins, of course, are extremely important to maintain the body, but without minerals, vitamins are basically not going to work. So minerals, it's pretty interesting. You know, we look at these, of course, from the foods, but we also get them uh, a lot from things like sea vegetables, like dulse, kelp, nori. These are those high mineral content foods and, you know, it's interesting, if you look at some of the work done by uh, Dr. Linus Pauling, Nobel Prize winner uh, in medicine and physiology, arguably one of the top integrative doctors ever, and from his vast experience, he stated that deficiencies in minerals are the root cause of all chronic disease. And what's a chronic disease? Well, cancer is a chronic disease, too. So when we can keep our nutrient content level uh, at an optimal level, this will support our bodies. For example, uh, let's take vitamin D. So from uh, research from Dr. Mercola, very well-known integrative doctor as well, he's actually been here at Hippocrates, from research that he's found that when you optimize your vitamin D levels, you will reduce your risk of all cancer by over 50%. That's just with D. Okay, so we're not even looking at other nutrients there at that point, although there are many other nutrients that are very, very supportive. And then when we look at anti-cancer properties in foods as well, we can also support our bodies. So, for example, sprouts. When we look at, say, broccoli sprouts, broccoli sprouts have been studied by even John Hopkins University. And they were so impressed by the anti-cancer properties in the broccoli sprouts. They actually patented the broccoli sprouts for a period of time until an ethical judge said you got to throw it out of court because you can't patent nature. So when we're talking about broccoli sprouts, you know, you're talking about something that has a hundred times more endol-3 carbonyl than the mature plant. And this has been shown to have very high anti-cancer activity especially with breast cancer. Now, and you're going to get different phytonutrients and different sprouts that have anti-cancer properties. And these have been studied by many different universities and many other organizations. And these are things that you can grow in your home uh, very inexpensively. 
uh, and quite easily once you get the hang of it. Um, now beyond that, we want to support our lymphatic system as well. So how do we support our lymphatic system? Our lymphatic system needs movement to get it going. And if we're not moving, we're not moving our lymphatics and they get stagnant and we're not going to be able to cleanse our body as well or support our immune function as well as we want. So one of those is through the use of water, of course, keeping well hydrated. Normally, according to the National Institute of Health, we should have half our body weight in fluid ounces per day. And we want to keep ourselves well hydrated. And we also want a very pure water. So we're talking about minimally something like a distilled water or better to support the hydration. Now, when we hydrate, of course, we're going to support our lymphatics. But our lymphatics also need movement. So if we can exercise, uh, things like aerobic exercise, walking, biking, swimming, things that are movement, even say if we're at a point where we can't move around very well, even if we can lie in our bed and move our bike or move our legs where we're riding a bike, we're going to be getting to move those lymphatics. We can do skin brushing, skin brushing with a soft bristle brush, always brushing towards your heart. This is going to help move your lymphatics as well. Or you can work with a lymphatic massage specialist to help with that cleansing also. And that leads me into also detoxification. Detoxification is going to be very important because when you can reduce that toxic burden on the body, you're going to support your immune system. That's going to help support your overall body and your healing. So how can we do that? Well, we can do some simple things. We can, of course, exercise aerobic and anaerobically. This will help with detoxification. We can use things like saunas. We use infrared and steam saunas here at Hippocrates to help with cleansing. And here at Hippocrates, we use even things like colon hydrotherapy to help with the cleansing of the body as well. And then sometimes we'll use certain targeted nutrients that help with cleansing, such as uh, blue-green algae which is a superfood uh, with 65 vitamins and minerals. It's a complete protein as well, and also very good to help with your detoxification. Now, beyond that, of course, uh, sleep is very important. And when we're talking about sleep, normally we look at about eight hours of sleep. Some people can function uh, with six to eight hours, but when we start to get less sleep, it can start to affect our immune system. Now, there are simple things that we can do for sleep. Uh, if we have access to a sauna, we can use the saunas later in the evening to help with calming. We can use things like chamomile tea. We can use meditation to help with the calming of the body. And then beyond that, there's other different natural herbals or remedies. And here at Hippocrates, we're using some state-of-the-art technology that's really helpful with sleep. It's called New Calm. And what they do is they use a microcurrent they place in this region uh, and they add a little bit of GABA, a neurotransmitter to the skin region. They use therapeutic music and they also cover the eyes for the light and it helps to put the body from a sympathetic or a stress state to a parasympathetic state or a relaxed state and many people find it's extremely helpful for not only reducing stress but also very helpful with sleep as well. So, you know, these are some of those things we can do and when we can reduce that uh, sympathetic state or we can reduce stress, this is going to help us tremendous too because that's going to help our immune system. Now, when we're talking about reducing stress, there's basic things we can do. Uh, we can watch comedies that we enjoy or uh, we can go to a comedy club. These are things where we can start to get the endorphins going from, from laughter so we can feel good. And this is going to support our immune system as well and de-stress. Um, we can use things like visualization. Uh, visualization is basically um, where we visualize ourselves doing something and coming to a completion of that. Um, they've used it in things like sports, for example, with basketball players. You know, basketball players taking a jump shot. Now, what they did is in the study, 
They had players that actually physically took the jump shot. Then they took players who just visualized that they made the jump shot. And then they had other players that just sat down on the bench and did nothing. The players that visualized making the shot and actually physically shot, their percentages were almost identical. So we can use that in concepts as well to support the healing process. Beyond that, there are support groups. Uh, Dr. Bernie Siegel is a big uh, supporter of that. And uh, they do show that people actually have higher survival rates who use these things. We actually do that here at Hippocrates as well. Beyond that, there's things like affirmations. Affirmations are statements that we tell ourselves that help to connect our mind and our body to support goals in life, support healing. And we can use it in different ways. Uh, for example, uh, we can tell ourselves, I will be well, or I am well. And you continue to tell yourself that until the body and mind or uh, come together in that, that situation and supports uh, the energy of the body, but also supports reducing stress and supports the healing process. And then also forgiveness. You know, when we hold grudges, uh, when we are continuing to allow energy to be used in that negative way, this is a taking away from energy that we can use in a productive way, like supporting ourselves and supporting our immune system. So there are many, many things that we can do in a natural way. So, you know, basically in summary, we're talking about foods, ideally raw, organic, uh, sprouted foods that are helpful for the body to support overall nutrition, alkalizing, phytonutrients, enzymes, and low glycemic, low sugar. These are all those things that are going to really support that body and support that healing process too. So everyone, I hope some of these tips helped you and have a great night. Thanks a lot.